let's start with a very basic figure. This code generates a line and a scatter plot. To improve this figure, matplotlib gives us extensive customization options. I won't go through all of them, you can look at the docs for that, but I will show some of the most useful and common options. First, let's play with the line plot. Some of the most commonly used customizations are applied here. We change the thickness of the line with the line width parameter. We can change the line style. This string corresponds to a dashed line. In fact, there are a huge number of styles and you can even make your own. Generally, you never need anything but solid, dash, dotted, and maybe dash dot. Finally, we change the color. Note color is spelled the American way without a U. Here I'm using a named color, magenta. Again, there are many, many, many named colors and you can define your own if you can't find the exact shade that you want. So we have now successfully customized the line. You will also see shorthand such as this. The MO dash is a format string. It specifies color, marker, and line style. Here we're using M for magenta, O for circles, and a dash for a solid line. This is the result. The format string can be useful, but it's a bit less flexible and you can't use most of the name colors, for example. Another way to achieve the same effect is to make a line plot and a scatter plot of the same data. This lets you customize the line and the points as much as you want. Note that as we've made two scatter plots, we've moved to the next color in the matplotlib cycle, that is orange, for the second data set. Some useful options to modify a scatter plot are applied here. We have the point size, the color, and the shape of the point. Capital P makes the markers filled in pluses. Again, there are dozens of options to choose from here. Here's the final plot. Very ugly, but looks just as we wanted it to. Pause and think about what this code is going to do. It produces this. Do you see the problem? Some of the blue points are hidden behind the bars of the bar chart. By specifying the Z order, we can choose which figure elements go in front, those ones with higher Z order, and which ones go in the back with lower Z order. With higher Z order, now the blue points are in the front. We can also address ordering issues with transparency. The alpha parameter, which is also available for plot, scatter, and most other PyPlot functions, controls the transparency. It ranges between 1, meaning completely opaque, to 0, meaning completely see-through. Now with see-through boxes, we can see the points. Whether you want to manipulate the Z order or use transparency depends on the data and what you're trying to show in your figure. Transparency can sometimes alter the color in figure legends, so generally I use Z order where possible. Now we customize all the stuff around the data. We'll go through the additions one at a time. First, we set the X and Y limits. This controls where our X and Y axes start and finish. Typically, you want to put a little space between your data and the upper and lower edges of the figure. The default is usually fine, but it's important to specify the axis boundaries if we're comparing different plots, for example. Here, we define the X and the Y ticks, that is, the numbers written on the X and the Y axes. Note that for the X ticks, we have given the positions in the first list and the labels at those positions in the second list. If you've never seen this weird dollar notation before, it's LaTeX a way to encode mathematical formulas which matplotlib can understand and render for us. Next we have labels for each axis. We have a figure title and finally a figure legend. Note that the text in the legend comes from the label property which must be specified when the plotting function is called. The legend has a lock property which lets you locate it wherever you want in the figure. This is the result. The one thing which still doesn't look nice to me are the x and the y axes. Matplotlib calls these spines. To change them we first have to call the GCA function. This stands for get current axes. We'll talk a lot about axes in the next video. For now, it just returns the object we need in order to change the spines. The bottom and left spines have been moved to the zero position. This puts the corresponding spines at x equals zero and y equals zero. We have set the top and right spines to have a color equal to none. If something doesn't have a color, it isn't drawn, so this is just a way to remove them. Putting it all together, we get this, which looks a lot better. There's still a lot more to learn about customization and making more complicated types of figure, but for now we'll stop here and talk about a different and more powerful way to use matplotlib in the next video.